everyone welcome back to my channel welcome to today's video i hope you're doing very well so we're doing another let's have a chat kind of video i haven't done one of these in quite a while um so today i want to talk about a topic that is very sensitive um very kind of taboo um and you know beforehand i want to apologize if i offend anyone and that i will be talking about some sensitive topics so if you do get kind of triggered or you don't really want to hear anything about like murder or you know control and abuse then um this video might not be for you but um today i'm going to be talking about the so-called honor base violence um and i've mentioned this a couple of times in some of my previous videos um saying that i've wanted to make a video like this for quite a while and here i am finally making it um it's just taken me a long time to kind of build up the courage to do it um just because a lot of people might not realize but i am from a asian background my parents are from pakistan and i know i don't look it because look at my skin you know um but you know my name kind of gives it away and stuff like that but um, a lot of people might kind of go, oh, well, why does she have an opinion? Why does she kind of feel so strongly about this? It's not just about, you know, me being Asian or, you know, from, you know, kind of Asian background. It's because, you know, as a woman, um, I feel empowered to kind of talk about stuff like this. Um, so essentially, um, again, I apologise if... I say something out of line or if I get anything wrong I am still quite nervous about making this video and I don't want to mess it up so I'm gonna kind of be as slow as I can I have my notes in front of me just because I have written stuff down in case my mind goes blank because it's a topic that not a lot of people know about or people don't want to know about because it is so it's so sad um, and it is affected by women also men around the world um, so essentially, let's get to the bottom of it. Um, what is honor-based violence? So essentially, if you were to kind of put it into quotations, it's the practices used to control someone. Um, and essentially, it is also perceived as kind of a culturally and religious belief by certain religions and cultures. Um, and it's essentially there to represent honour. So in a lot of cultures, honour is before everything else. It's before you, it's before your child, it's basically around a community um, and how people perceive you. And if, for example, you do something out of line that is not good for your honour, you will be punished for it. Um, and these include like forced marriage, um also not being able to kind of wear what you want to wear like you know a lot of people would have to wear like headscarves or kind of being forced to do something that they don't want to do um so also i'm sorry i keep on looking down i have my notes right in front of me and my hands are a bit like Ugh. um and yes yeah, so like i mentioned not being able to wear what you want to wear for example like short sleeve clothing dresses certain types of jewelry or even makeup um, and, you know, something like this will also include threats to kill someone or even attempting to kill someone. Um, domestic violence also proves in this as well. On a base violence isn't just resulting in death, although most of the time it does. Um, so essentially, um, you know, if you have heard anything about on a base violence, a lot of people might say, oh, this is based around Asian cultures. That's not true. Um, I only found out recently doing more research and actually doing my volunteering. So I actually get to do um, courses that I that kind of broaden information such as, you know, honor-based violence and FGM and even domestic violence. Um, and you kind of get to realize that it's such a wider spectrum as well. I didn't actually know that honor-based violence is also included in the traveler community. Um, because I went to a roadshow by a charity that I absolutely adore called Karma Nirvana. I'll be talking about them a bit soon. Um, but I went to one of their roadshows, which is essentially like a day course um, where they talk about domestic violence and they talk about honor-based violence. Um, and they had some people who had been affected by it. And I didn't actually know that it did affect the traveller community as well. Um, 
and that really opened my eyes and I was kind of like yeah this is not just an Asian thing um, and honestly growing up I didn't know much about it it wasn't until I read certain um, stories um, of certain females that I will be talking about soon um, that kind of got me into it's so weird saying that got me into the topic because it's not like it's oh yeah I'm just going to talk about murder today I'm going to talk about violence today it's not a happy topic by no means at all um, it's just something I like to tell people about and a lot of people do not know about it like there's people that I've spoken about this topic to who have absolutely no idea um, that it exists because um, when you think about domestic violence obviously you would be like oh that's physical but no like you know I've spoken about my volunteering previously and about how domestic violence isn't just physical you know it's emotional and it's financial and it's control um, and essentially that's what honor base is as well um, but like I mentioned previously it's about forced marriage too so what I learned was that in the UK I believe I don't know if I'm quoting myself or if this is right the legal age to get married is 16 um, and you know 16 is an insane age to get married you know especially when you have no control um, over what you know what you're saying because obviously it's illegal to get married below that age but in certain countries it's not illegal um, and your parents can just be like yeah she gives consent and she marries off and then she goes to start her own family and the next minute you know she's pregnant She's only 16 years old, she has no education, she has no future apart from looking after her husband. And if she's sad, there's nothing she can do about it. She will just have to carry on with her life. And that's what happens. And it's not, it's in just a country's overbroad. It happens here as well. And, you know, a lot of culturally kind of people who like to think they're above the law can go, yep, yeah, that's fine, she's 16, we can fake her age on this form and you can get her married off as long as you pay me a fee and I think anything happens I'm not going to be involved and it's you know it's such a sad topic and one of the reasons why I started to volunteer is to talk about honor based violence and I think I talk about it on the daily because it's such a topic that I feel so passionate about and that's why you know I started to learn more about Karma Nirvana and also ICRO which is an Iranian um, and Kurdish organization for women um, they are basically charities that do help women affected by the honor based violence and try and help them basically so they will find them a refuge they will give them advice about about housing and financial um, situations and what they also do is go to different schools and hold road shows like the one that I went to around different boroughs around the UK and tell people about on the base violence and what it is um, and just just trying to get the word out there because again like I mentioned not many people talk about it or want to talk about it or even know about it and it's shocking because it's such a important topic for generations to come because if something like this does not stop it won't ever stop because if you're raised a certain way you're gonna raise your child like that too and you know a lot of people who bring their children to westernized countries and don't like the way that they kind of start adapting to those and therefore it becomes their fault but it's not their fault because they are just trying to live their life and you know I was very fortunate to grow up with parents who you know were quite strict I could never really go and do certain things that I wanted to do and I just had to kind of abide by those situations did I always no because I was a rebellious teenager and that's just what you have to do sometimes I'm not saying the best way to do certain things is to rebel you just have to sometimes be yourself but in certain situations you just can't do it because you're trapped and there's certain people out there who literally have to spend 24 hours in their house followed by their parents because their parents don't trust them to go to school don't trust them to go to university and not talk to boys and have a boyfriend and wear certain clothes and do certain things um so for example, there is uh, one girl that I found out information about and her name is Shafilia Ahmed. 
She was um, born and raised, I believe, in the UK. Her dad and mum are from Pakistan and she was basically wanting to go to university to study law, just like a normal teenager would like to. And she had a part-time job and her parents were very controlling. Um, I believe she was the eldest of a couple of other siblings as well. Um, and she um, was basically just trying to live her life, you know, just being herself by having a job, going to university to want to study. And her parents did not let her do that. Like one day when she was working, um, all this information I'm getting off from other videos um, and other research I've done as well was that I believe that she, her parents wanted her to get married to someone in Pakistan, most likely one of her cousins. Um, because that's just that's just how it goes culturally um, or someone part of the family or has connections to the family that they want to keep the bloodline going and she refused to do that so what her parents did was they drugged her forced her on an airplane when she realized in Pakistan what was happening she decided to try and kill herself by drinking bleach um, she didn't die but she had really messed up her vocal cords and she couldn't eat etc her parents then came back to the UK just leaving her there um, and when she did come back and she kind of got back to normal I think she started to kind of see her friends again and do what she wanted to do and then one day when she was coming back from work her mum picked her up because you know when she was coming home from work one of her parents would always pick her up because they wouldn't trust her to do anything um, she was wearing white stiletto heels, I believe, and I think that got to a point where her parents were just so angry that they started to beat her and her parents basically held her, her father held her down and her mum got a carrier bag, stuffed it in her mouth and her dad just like forced his body weight onto her until she died and her siblings were there watching as well it was just like reading this and listening to this information is insane um for someone to have to go through that and her parents her dad had actually took her body thrown it in the river i think it was maybe the lake district i'm not sure um someone had reported her missing and then her parents went on national tv saying this is not right you're accusing us of murdering her you guys are racist well, essentially they didn't actually mention anything about her daughter I believe which is just so sad because she you know she was just a teenager who wanted to live her life and her parents did not want her to do that and you know her parents did get caught out because one of her sisters actually testified there's a, it's a whole longer story um, which I, I'm not going to get into because I have other stuff to talk about too no offense to you know the situation I apologize but there's so many ins and outs of this situation. Um, so essentially her sister dobbed in her parents and just said, look, she, they were the ones who killed her um, and therefore they are now in jail, thankfully. Um, and I believe like Carmen Nirvana also worked with an organization called the Shafilia Ahmed Foundation, who do the same thing that they do, which is go and do talks and roadshows, etc., to talk about her story basically and just passing on her legacy and you know thinking about what she could have been doing today if it wasn't for certain situations um and also other things that i have forgotten to mention that is you know things that happen a lot these days is that a lot of girls are taken out of school during their six weeks holidays to get married um and a lot of parent a lot of teachers sorry sometimes never actually follow up on what's happened because I think when the girls come back they're already married and it takes time for the other person's visa to kind of get through and then they come back and then they're not seen back at school again so therefore they just become a housewife you know if you think during the six weeks holidays you're like 14 15 and then you're being sent to a country that you've probably never been to before with marrying someone you've never met um and yeah, just not being able to live your life. And that is, you know, just coercive control. And that's just, it's unacceptable. But um, another victim that I wanted to talk about was Benaz Mahmood, which was, she was the first story that I ever found out about on a base violence, because there was some documentaries that I saw on YouTube. And just seeing 
her story is so heartbreaking. Um, she basically was forced into a marriage when she was 16. Her husband used to beat her and rape her and she wanted to obviously end it and her parents were like, no, you have to carry on. It's something that you're doing. You need to change and then be a better wife and then everything will be fine um, and then I think he was carrying on and he got to a point where she had gone to the police and said oh you know he used to do this to me do this um, and then I think she got a divorce went back to her parents and then she fell in love with someone who her parents did not agree with because this always happens um, and basically a few months later she well they tried to kill her once and she escaped and then they kind of lured her back in, they being her dad, uncle and cousins. They lured her into her uncle's home and that's when they murdered her. I don't really want to talk about what happened because it's just so sad. It's disgusting what happened. Um, if you ever want to read up on it or know what happened, there's a really good documentary on YouTube about her. So please just Google her name. And it will come up, there's a couple of different stories, um, not story, sorry, a couple of videos that have been made about her. So I do recommend watching them. Um, sorry, just choked up a bit. Um, and her sister is amazing. Um, she did a TED talk recently about um, child marriage. Um, her name is Paisy. She is one of the coolest people ever. Like I, you know, message her a lot on like Instagram or Facebook. Um, Twitter just kind of wishing her well and saying how much I enjoy her podcast because she has a podcast which is awesome on Spotify um, and she's basically just an ambassador um, for Karma Nirvana as well um, and she is a survivor and that's the important thing like she is there to spread the word of her sister's life and her own situation about honor-based violence um, but yeah, I just, um, you know, it's very difficult to kind of talk about certain situations like this because you don't want to offend anyone. You don't want to send out the wrong message. But I mean, with stuff like this, you can't send out the wrong message because we all know that child marriage is wrong. We know violence is wrong. Um, and we know domestic violence is wrong. And, you know, um, charities that do help women and, you know, men as well. I'm not saying this doesn't happen to men. This definitely happens to everyone um but you know the end spectrum is that females do get affected by this a bit more um and that's not discouraging anything that's ever happened to a man without a doubt um but you know these situations they just need to stop and this is why i'm making this video to spread awareness that's why i volunteer that's why i want to work in the charity sector because a lot of people ask me why i volunteer and it's situations like this that makes me you know be vocal because I love talking about it. I love, you know, you know, talking about my passions. You know, I, makeup is a passion. This is a passion also, but this is far more important than putting makeup on my face and going, this lipstick works really well. This is real life. Like this is happening. This could be happening to a friend. This could be happening to a family member. This could be happening to your next door neighbor. You do not know because a lot of the time these things happen under closed doors. Um, but yeah, that is essentially what I want to make this video for. Um, if you have any questions about on the base violence or anything, please send me a message, comment. I'm very happy to answer them if I can. I'll leave Carmen Nirvana's information in, oh, sorry, the lights come out, um, in the description because they are an organisation who will definitely help you. I've got this pack at their roadshow and it comes with um, leaflets and it comes with lots of their information cards um, and you can also check out their website and their landline um, and also just get to know them a bit more. Um, I follow them on Twitter so you can follow them as well just to kind of get an insight as to who they are and they're always updating um, their what they're doing so where they're going to be and you know check their website for events because I went to the Tower Hamlets um roadshow which was amazing um that was like a whole day of like information coming at you and like tears and just overwhelming um was happening that day but obviously if you don't come out of a situation you don't come out of topics like that not crying then what is wrong with you <laughs> but honestly um 
yeah I've rambled on for a very long time this is like almost 20 minutes but thank you so much for watching if you're up, you are still watching um, again please like and subscribe um, I'm thinking about doing other let's have a chat but I'm gonna think about what to talk about um, and if you have any suggestions please leave them as well I'll be really appreciative of that but thank you so much for watching guys I will hopefully see you very soon bye